Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Thinking Thursday from the South Dakota Agricultural Heritage Museum. My name is Sarah, and today for Thinking Thursday, we are actually finishing up part two of a two-week experiment. And so last week we did our experiment for our soil particle experiment. And this week we are going to go ahead and use the soil texture triangle to figure out exactly what type of soil we have. So let's go ahead and get started. The materials that you'll need for today are your results from your soil particle experiment jar. And that's what we did last week. Um, just as a bit of a refresher, we started with a mason jar that we filled halfway up with soil. Um, after we filled it halfway up with soil, we added water to reach about an inch from the top. And then we shook that jar up really well so that water could be dispersed through the soil and we could break up any big clumps of soil. And then after that water was worked through the soil, we actually let that jar sit for up to 24 hours until those layers started to form. Now you can see from my results over on the right hand side of the screen that I have some pretty distinct layers in there. And so uh, we're, we'll start talking about that here in a minute or two, but hopefully your experiment jar looks kind of similar with a bit of a layer breakdown like mine does on the right. The other thing that you will need is a soil texture triangle, and that is pictured kind of here in the middle of the screen. I got mine from the NRCS website, and so if you go to nrcs.usda.gov, you'll be able to find a soil textural triangle. And so today what I'm going to show you guys is how you take your results from your experiment and how to turn that into results and a soil type on this textural triangle. Now it looks a little bit intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, the textural triangle is pretty easy and straightforward to use. And so let's get started. First, we are going to go ahead and look at my results and do a bit of a breakdown for you. And so if you have your own results at home, you can go ahead and follow along and do the same things that I'm doing. I tried to get the best picture that I could of my results. And so you can see a few pretty distinct layers here when it comes to looking at my soil. The first layer that you see at the bottom, and it's about the bottom two thirds, is sand. So sand, again, is the largest soil particle, and it's the soil particle that you can see with the naked eye. And so you can actually look into your jar, and you can actually see those different particles all in there and see those different grains of sand all in there. Um, so that's a pretty distinct and easy layer to find. The next layer working your way up that you will have is silt. And so you can see that I've marked off that section there. That's about a third of my soil sample in that silt section. Again, silt is that middle soil particle. And so it has pretty decent water retaining abilities and it's okay at drainage. Unlike sand that has really good drainage, and really poor ability to hold on to that water. And so now we figured out sand and silt in our layers. The last layer left is clay. And so clay is a very skinny layer in my soil, my soil sample that I have here today to show you guys. But you can tell pretty distinctly that that is clay, and I'll work back here for a second. You can see that that layer across the top is just a bit lighter than the middle layer or my silt layer. And so that's how I know that that layer is clay. And so that's about 5% of my soil sample at the top. And so after you have your layers figured out and identified, what you will need to do now is figure out what percentage each layer is. So I have gone ahead and I have figured out that my sand layer is about 65% of my soil sample. My silt layer is about 30%, and then I have a really thin clay layer, and so I'm gonna go ahead and call that a 5%. Um, these percentages are really important to figure out because you will need these to fill in and figure out what kind of soil texture you, or soil type you have on that textural triangle. 
And so again, I've got 65% sand, 30% silt, and 5% clay. So here again is my soil textural triangle. As you can see, I went ahead and put a box over on the left-hand side so that I can remember what percentages each of my soil particles is. And so we are going to go ahead and we are going to start at the bottom of the textural triangle and do our sand line first. So you can see that I've on the right hand side broken it down and I've done sand in blue, silt in green, and clay in yellow just so that it's a little bit easier to distinguish for you guys and you can follow along on the screen a little bit easier as well. So you can see sand is listed down on the bottom side of your textural triangle and you can see clay is up on the left hand side while silt is over on the right hand side. And so we're gonna go ahead and start at the bottom. I'm gonna start with sand. As you can see where it says sand separate percent, that an arrow is pointing from right to left. That means that the smallest percentages are gonna be over on the right-hand side, and it's going to work up to your larger percentages over on the left-hand side. So since I have 65% sand, I'm going to go ahead and put a dot along that bottom axis right there at 65%. So you can see that now I have a blue dot on that bottom line. Since that arrow on the bottom is pointing towards the left, that is how I'm going to mark my line to figure out what type of soil I have. You can see from that blue dot that I have that you have a line that goes up and to the left and up and to the right, but since that arrow along the bottom is pointing to the left, we are going to follow that line to the left side, so that's up and to the left. So you can see that I went ahead and highlighted that line right there in blue, so it's a little bit easier to follow along. I'm just going to go ahead and work my way clockwise around the circle, and so I'm actually going to do clay next. So as you can see on the left-hand side, it says clay separate and percentages. And again, that line and arrow is moving from bottom to top in this case. And so since I have 5% clay, I'm going to go ahead and make a yellow dot at the 5% line. Like the sand at the bottom, that arrow that's over on the left-hand side will tell you what direction you wanna make that clay line out into the triangle. So from the different points on the left-hand side for clay, you can either go straight across or you can kinda of go down and to the right. But since the line on the left-hand side is pointing up, we are going to do the upper line and so that is actually the line that's straight across and so you can see that now i have an intersection between my blue sand line and my yellow clay line now that i have these two lines figured out and they intersect that's going to be a pretty good giveaway that the soil type that i'm working with today is a sandy loam but just to make sure that everything is worked out percentage-wise, I'm gonna go ahead and do the silt line as well. For silt, we are doing green today, and silt is on the right-hand side of your textural triangle. You can see that the arrow is pointing from the top of the triangle down to the bottom of the triangle, and so uh, that is how your percentages are lined up on that side. Since we have 30% silt, I'm going to go ahead and mark a green dot at 30%. And since that line is pointing from top to bottom, that arrow over on the right-hand side by silt separate, we are going to use the line that's going and pointing towards the bottom as well when you have your two coming out from that 30% point. 
So I'm going to go ahead and throw that down. And now you can see that we've fully figured it out. And we have all three of those lines intersecting at the sandy loam section of the soil textural triangle, which is great. Um, that's your way to kind of verify that you've done the right thing is that all of your three lines intersect at the same point. If your lines don't intersect at the same point, then you want to make sure you start from the beginning and you redo your lines until those lines all come together at one intersection. The other really important thing to remember in this case is that um, when you figure out your percentages, you want to make sure that they equal up to 100%. So 65 plus 30 plus 5 does equal 100. And so that's also another thing to remember that if you're having issues with your lines intersecting, make sure that those percentages equal 100%. So that's a quick and easy way on how to use a soil textural triangle. Now that you know what type of soil you have, whether you did this in a garden or in a field or in your lawn or wherever you're working with your soil types, um, this is a great thing to know because there are some plants out there that do really well in different soil environments. For example, succulents are and cactus plants are really good plants that work well in sandy soils because they have a lot more drainage. And so when you have that water that comes through, it drains through pretty quickly and doesn't sit there. Um, succulents and cactus plants are really um, drought tolerant. And so those sandy soils work really good for those. And so that's just one example of how plants thrive in different soil environments. And so like I said, that is how you use the soil textural triangle. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and let me know. Again, I'm Sarah at the South Dakota Agricultural Heritage Museum. And thanks for joining for us for part two of our um, soil particle experiments. Have a great rest of your day.